This material has been prepared for informational purposes only and is not intended to provide and should not be relied on for medical or legal advice. You should consult your own medical or legal advisors for specific and personalized advice. Made possible through support from Alliance Colorado, CCDC Colorado Cross Disability Coalition, Developmental Pathways, and the Arc of Aurora. Think Change Talks. Cannabis and Disability, a series of different perspectives. An end user perspective. My name is Michelle Walker. My son's name is Vincent. I am part of Mothers Advocating Medical Marijuana for Autism, and I'm also the Vice President of Safe Access Colorado. Both organizations focus on medical cannabis uh, legalization and issues within the disability community. And my son was diagnosed with intractable epileptic encephalopathy. We found out he was seizing every 10 seconds. and. The medications were slowing them down, but he was still having seizures like every 20 minutes. And it was just, it wasn't realistic and it was very dangerous. It became life and death. And that's when I was like, all right, let's talk about that cannabis now. Level three autism diagnosis, IDD, OCD, ADHD, you know, the alphabet soup of diagnoses that often happen. But when he was diagnosed with epilepsy, that's really when things um, took a sharp turn for us because before it was about just giving him the best quality of life and you know sometimes that meant things might be difficult for him or for us but we would work through it there can be aggression in autism both directed outwards and at the individual and we worked through that um, but the medicines he was taking for the epilepsy really exacerbated that aggression to the point that he was attacking me and I knew that this was beyond his control. We tried cannabis. It was kind of a shot in the dark. It's, it's like the world opened up to him and allowed him to be himself. That's the best way I can describe how I see him now. And I really had to realign my thinking that this isn't just marijuana, this is medical cannabis treating certain conditions or aspects of these conditions. And that's when I really realigned my thinking. I was like, okay, it's about what works for him. And now my son pretends and he loves Star Wars. And it's just, it's more than I could imagine. He's still significantly delayed. My son's still autistic. And this isn't about curing autism or changing him. This is about giving him the best quality of life to be himself as an autistic young man. Cannabis is not one size fits all. My son, it took a while to find out what works for him. Your child may need different options or you as an individual may need something completely different, but don't let that stop you. Don't give up, keep exploring, and then change your mind a little bit about what you think is right or wrong. And you might be tempted to try it on yourself, but remember that you may be neurotypical and your child is not, so you have very different needs. And I know it's hard to rethink these things that we've been taught throughout our lives. A lot of us think of, of D.A.R.E. and, you know, McGruff telling us that drugs are bad with an egg in a frying pan. This is your brain on drugs. And the science is showing that that's not really true. It's not bad. It's the only thing that stopped my son's seizures. It's what has given him the ability to be more independent and have a voice for himself. My name's Oliver Gimonero. Um, I'm a C4 complete quadriplegic, tetraplegic. I've, it's been 28 years post injury. Why I turned to cannabis when I was um, re relatively recently injured, I'd been only injured for a couple years. I had some really bad autonomic dysreflexia and it's a condition, a condition that's unique to the spinal cord population. I was having a really serious autonomic dysreflexia outbreak and um, a therapist was like, well, my mom, honestly, was like, let's try marijuana. She had heard some beneficial stuff. 
when I was in my initial rehab. And so we did, and it was like a switch. It just stopped it immediately. And so I've used marijuana to help me with my dyslexia for probably the past 25 years or something. So I prefer usually the THC. Um, I do find beneficial effects of CBD. It's just a little harder to get. Um, but I do find beneficial, but I do enjoy the THC, the full spectrum. Um, I do have a med card. And so sometimes I go and I will get some from the store. Recently though, I have um, felt like some types give me a little anxiety. And so it's good to be aware of that for me and not try to like use too much or certain types I've found sometimes make me feel more anxious than others. Um, I smoke it through a water. Sometimes I eat edibles, but for the most part, I smoke it through a water pipe. When I first got injured, vaping and edibles really weren't, you know, in the mainstream. You know, like hippies would make pot brownies and stuff, but there really wasn't like you couldn't just get some edibles that were measured like so many milligrams a dose. Um, and so I had a doctor, you know, just really encouraged me to use water because it, it lowers the temperature and it filters out some of the tar. And so after 28 years of use, 25 years of use, my lungs are still relatively in good shape, which is kind of surprising, you know, because smoke is not beneficial to your lungs. So marijuana has been a huge help ever since, you know, I had that incident. And I've had other incidents and I, I you know, I'm not saying it, it cured it because I still have the dysreflexia. It's still, you know, directly related to my spinal cord injury. I really don't like the classification between medical or recreational. It's like coffee. When does your cup of coffee become medical or when is it recreational? Like, you know, because caffeine's a drug. And so like one cup is medical and two cups is recreational. It may not be for everyone, but it's really effective for me. You know, it's a medicine, so, you know, treat it with respect. Think Change Talks 